was 19 years old. I still lived at home with my parents and little brother. They were going out of town for a weekend getaway. But I was in the angsty stage where I only wanted to do my own thing, even if it meant forgoing a legitimate good time. The truth was that I was incredibly hungover. I was early on in my drinking career and had a long night of boozing the night before. I felt so sick that all I wanted to do was lay down and be alone. I definitely didn't have the stomach to be with my family for 72 hours straight. I coughed up some excuse and they left me behind. You might ask yourself what I had planned for this epic little weekend. No house parties, no spin the bottle, no drugs or music. The first thing I did was cut all my hair. This was around the time Britney Spears shaved her head. It was on every news station in America. I low-key thought it was kind of badass to just go against what everyone thought about you. I was getting ready to ship off to college at the time. So the notion of self-reinvention was very exciting. Chopping off my hair seemed to be the quickest, most convenient route of rebellion. After the impromptu haircut, I went to the bathroom for a mini spa afternoon. Face masks, moisturizers, and I even cranked up the shower to make it all steamy. After an hour of lounging in the bathroom and getting all the hair cleaned up, I stepped out into the hallway, naked as the day I was born. Moving naked through the house is a prized pastime for many homebodies. I was no exception. I went into the kitchen to find a snack and just kind of zoned out as I looked out the window. I glanced down to the bag I'm eating out of and I see a note on the counter. That's weird, I think. I don't remember my parents leaving me a note. At first glance, I recognized right away that it's not any handwriting I know. It reads, I was going to leave you a letter, but I see that you're still here. My blood runs cold. Still here? Who the hell wrote this? I can feel the water dripping down my back, reminding me of just how vulnerable I am. It's the middle of the day, and still, I'm worse off than a sitting duck. There's a creek down the hallway. I make the split decision and barrel towards my bedroom. I can't do anything without clothes. I'd rather get murdered than run onto the street naked. There's someone standing there, though. I enter the room and find a man. Tall, dark clothing, with greasy hair. Hair hanging in his face. The moment I step into the room, he cracks this broad smile. And it's the creepiest thing I've ever seen. The only thing I can do is scream bloody murder at the top of my lungs. His smile fades, and he takes a step towards me, almost apologetically. That's when I recognize him, this weird guy that I dated my freshman year. We were an item for about three weeks before he ran away from home. And I mean ran, ran away. No one saw or heard from him for months. The local myth was that he'd been found one city over and was homeschooled now. Regardless, here he stood, grinning in my bedroom. He reached behind himself, grabbed my clothes off the bed, then hands them to me. I proceeded to dress myself in the most awkward situation I can possibly imagine. He didn't even act like he was doing anything wrong, which was creepy, but also a comfort. Kind of like a little kid or something. He makes me sit down on the bed after I get dressed. Honestly, he didn't do anything weird or violent. He didn't threaten or hurt me, other than breaking into my house. He heard I was moving away and wanted to see me before I left. He said he'd been thinking about the past a lot and that freshman year was his favorite. We talked for a couple of hours and then he left. I never saw him again, but I did hear a couple of years later that he was fully institutionalized for schizophrenia. That definitely added up when everything was said and done but made me feel a little uneasy after the fact. How long was he in my house without me knowing that day? And 
worse than that. Could he have possibly hurt me? Lock your doors when you decide to stay home alone. I live in a small country where things still go bump in the night. And that doesn't go for just creepy local legends, dark strangers, cartels. I think you get the idea where I live. Nowhere is truly removed from the day-to-day -day dangers of the unknown. It was a dark night, and I found myself home alone. Here, it isn't uncommon for the entire family to live together. Grandparents, parents, children, grandchildren. All sharing a growing piece of property for wealth and security. It's the simplest way to live. But as you can imagine, being home alone is a rarity with so many people under one roof. It's almost impossible to time anything just right to ever be actually alone. So I did what I always do. I hooked up the surround sound throughout the living room and turned out all the lights. I bundled up on the couch with my favorite snack and watched whatever I desired on the big family television. Despite the ever-present danger I mentioned earlier, I remember that evening being quite relaxing. Rain and a breeze moved in along the coast, creating a pitter-patter against the roof. As the night went on, I thought I heard someone at the front door. As I moved to investigate, the sound and movement stopped. But being a stormy night, and with the sound up so loud, I truly believed I'd simply heard something that wasn't there. I turned back to the movie and did my best to relax. That's when the back door began to rattle. I adjusted myself on the sofa to get a better look when someone started to knock. A frantic, heavy banging against the hardwood. I froze in place. Whatever I dismissed as storm sounds, or maybe just junk blowing around in the backyard, was now undeniable. There was someone trying to come inside the house. Everyone who lives there naturally has a key, but whoever is outside the door clearly does not. At the time, I'm an 18-year-old man running through logical scenarios in my head. Whoever this is, they tried to open up the front door, then slipped around the side of the house and is now trying to force the back door open. This isn't a cartel or a monster. Anything with real bloodlust would have forced the front door open. I reasoned that it's a common thief, probably someone very nervous and trying to remain unseen. Being 18, I decided to take them head on and show the world they picked the wrong house. I moved from the couch to the kitchen, grabbed the biggest cleaver I could find, 10 inches of dingy, ugly steel, Still, the door handle is twisting back and forth. Go time. I have no idea what's going to happen, but I'm down for whatever. There's nothing like the mentality of a teenager. You don't know who you're messing with. I shouted through the door. The stranger on the other side, stop shaking the handle for a moment. I know you're out there. You have three seconds to get the hell out of here, or I'll cut you up didn't care. The knocking started again, even harder than before. My confidence quickly faded. I took a deep breath and readied myself. In my head, this was do or die. Holding the cleaver over my head, I unfastened the bolt and threw open the door before me. It wasn't a burglar or a gangster of any kind. It was my sweet little grandma. She stood there soaking wet with an expression of agitation, but also unmistakable terror. What are you doing? She shouted at me. What are you doing at the back door? I asked. I thought you were an intruder. Oh, no, no, she laughed as she stepped inside the house. I went and paused the television while she shed her coats by the door. She explained that she had gotten home during the storm tried knocking for a while. That was the noise I heard at the front door. 
I guess she knocked for quite a while because she finally gave up and decided to try the back door. The front entrance has a little cover, so she figured that even if it were locked, at least she would be out of the rain. That's when I started to hear the commotion and decided to go to war with whatever was outside. Glad I didn't though, because I seriously almost killed my grandma. I played softball throughout high school. This meant I got home an hour or two later than school actually let out. Regardless, I was still the first one home more often than not. My parents worked well into the afternoon and my sister participated in various clubs and after-school events like theater club. I got home one day to the usual scene, fully locked house, lights off, a note for my mom in the kitchen. I let my dog out in the backyard, changed out of my uniform, and opened up a bag of Cheetos. A very average, very typical day. My dog scratched to let me know he was bored and to let him inside. Dog and I cuddled on the couch and started watching our favorite shows. Out of nowhere, I heard a door slam open. It's beneath me, downstairs in the basement. I could feel it vibrate through the floorboards. I know this sounds weird, but this wasn't out of the ordinary. The basement was like a downstairs apartment. My older sister lived down there. The basement had its own entry door to the outside she could be pretty careless with her coming and going. Er, barely had to stand up from the couch to be able to see through the small glass window in the front door. Now I really do freeze. My heart is the only thing I can feel in motion, steadily slamming up my throat. Staring back at me through the pain was not my boyfriend, but an older, bearded stranger the most unfamiliar face I'd ever seen. This little window in the door was weird because if you were up close and trying to look through it, the prismatic glass skewed the optics, making it impossible to know what you were looking at. You had to have some distance between yourself and the window, like I had right now, to make out what was actually on the other side. This guy was looking at me, but I knew he couldn't actually see me. I snuck back down the hallway and hid in the doorway of my bedroom. I was scared, but I would have been way more scared if I didn't have an eye on him. I could imagine how I'd feel if I turned my back for one second and lost track of him. Remember when I said I live in a rural area? Well, I also live in a cellular dead zone. I didn't even bother to find the damn thing. Instead, I stepped to my bedside and fished the landline from my end table. I hit the dial button and brought the receiver to my ear. It's completely dead in my hand. The guy hammers on the door this time, screaming at the top of his lungs. I'm in, he slurs. My blood runs cold. This is now worse than a horror movie. I start running through what few options are available to me. No phone, no way to get to the car, no one coming to get me. I have to stay inside where it's safe. That's the only thing that makes sense. First, I sneak into the kitchen, slide the chef knife out of the block. It's the only weapon in the whole house. Next, I slink into the bathroom across from my bedroom and lock the door. It's just a weak little handle lock it's enough to buy me some time if he actually breaks through the front door. For some reason, the idea of keeping the high ground is pulsing through my mind. It's literally all I could think about. I barricaded myself in the bathroom so I, terrifying in the moment, I climbed up onto the countertop and crouched above the door. If he broke in, I'd be able to jump on his back and stab him in the neck and shoulders. I was terrified of the whole thing, but I do have to admit, I was very pleased with my whole little assault strategy. In my head, it made the most sense. With a knife in hand, all I had to do was strike at the right time. 
time went by, and the guy just kept yelling, Hey, let me in! Now he was moving around the house. I could hear his hand dragging along the siding as he walked from end to end. He checked each and every window, yanking on the frame, pushing on the glass. Thankfully, I kept them all locked, as well as both doors. I could hear his frustration as he took to wailing on the walls again, demanding I let him inside. Something occurred to me. That handset I fished out from my bedside table was dead. This psycho didn't cut the line. I just didn't charge the phone. There was a second one down the hall in the kitchen. Nervously, I climbed down from my perch on the countertop and waited until I heard the guy on the opposite side of the house. I unlocked the door and bolted for the phone, which was exactly where I thought it'd be. Sitting in the cradle by the back door, I snagged it and retreated back to the bathroom. I called 911 and they dispatched a few officers, but were totally transparent when they told me it'd take at least 15 minutes for them to get there. I was on my own and needed to stay frosty until they arrived. I stayed on the line until the cops arrived. They could hear the guy pulling and kicking at the doors, screaming for me to open it. It was the longest 15 minutes of my life. When they arrived, they apprehended the man immediately. Dispatch confirmed that I could exit the house, where I stepped out to find a whole team of cops standing around one dirty, scruffy, drunk-off-his-ass, hippie-looking kid who was cuffed, sitting on the ground, totally confused about the situation. He clearly wasn't a murderer. There was a party down the road. This kid stumbled off to take a piss or something, got lost in the dark, and thought my house was the spot. He convinced himself that everyone had locked the doors and was hiding somewhere. Turned out to be a big misunderstanding, but still, it was absolutely terrifying in the moment. Bedroom behind me, casting a faint glow into the living room. As I stood there in the dim light, I suddenly felt a shiver run down my spine. I noticed movement in the kitchen, a subtle shadow against the darkness. Panic set in as I strained to see what was causing it. It was a figure, a person standing near the entrance to the kitchen. My heart raced as I tried to comprehend what was happening. In a hushed tone, I called out, Who's there? The figure didn't respond, just stood there in the shadows. Fear coursed through me, but I needed to know what was going on. I took a step forward, squinting to get a clearer view. Suddenly, the person darted toward the kitchen window and disappeared into the night. I was left standing there, alone in the darkness. My mind raced with a million thoughts. Who was that person? And how did they get into my apartment? I quickly moved to the kitchen window and peered outside. The figure was nowhere to be seen. My apartment felt like a fortress that had been breached and a deep sense of vulnerability settled in. After that night, I couldn't shake the unease. I installed extra locks on my doors and windows, but the fear lingered. The incident remained a mystery and I never found out who the intruder was or what their intentions were. Days turned into weeks, and I tried to regain a sense of normalcy. However, the memory of that shadowy figure in my kitchen haunted me. I became hyper aware of every creak and rustle in the night, always on edge, wondering if they would return. Living alone in that small apartment became an unsettling experience. The once comforting space now felt like a place of constant vigilance. The fear transformed the familiar into the unknown, and every sound became a potential threat. To this day, the memory of those two nights continues to impact me. The apartment was no longer a haven, but a place tainted by an intrusion that left its mark on my sense of security. 
the fear that gripped me in those moments made me realize the fragile nature of safety and the lasting effects of an unexpected breach. Weak. My parents had to attend a social event, leaving me at home with my sisters. Since we were still relatively new to the neighborhood, we didn't know many people around. My sisters, being older, decided to invite a few of their friends over to hang out and watch movies. As the evening progressed, we all settled into the family room, engrossed in a movie. The night was uneventful, and we enjoyed the company of my sister's friends. However, as the movie came to an end, and my sisters and their friends decided to head upstairs, an eerie feeling settled over me. I suddenly became aware of a presence in the house that didn't belong to any of us or the guests. I brushed it off at first, attributing it to my imagination. But as I sat alone in the dimly lit family room, the unease grew. I heard subtle creaks and distant shuffles, almost like footsteps, echoing from somewhere within the house. My curiosity mixed with a growing sense of fear. I hesitated for a moment, debating whether to investigate or dismiss it as my imagination. Gathering my courage, I decided to check the source of the sounds, slowly making my way through the house. I realized the noise was coming from the basement. The door to the basement was slightly ajar, which was unusual as we rarely used that space. As I descended the stairs, the air became cooler and the sounds more pronounced. It was then that I heard faint whispers. My heart pounded in my chest as I reached the bottom of the stairs and turned on the basement light. To my shock, I found a group of strangers huddled in the corner. They seemed as surprised to see me as I was to see them. Panic set in and I quickly retreated slamming the door shut. I raced upstairs and found my sisters and their friends explaining the bizarre encounter. The strangers turned out to be kids from the neighborhood who had somehow gained access to our basement. It turned out they thought the house was still vacant and were using the space as a secret hangout. They apologized and left hastily, realizing they had invaded our privacy incident left a lasting impression on me. The sense of vulnerability in a new environment, coupled with the unexpected presence of strangers in our home, made me more cautious about the security of our living space. It taught me that even in a seemingly safe neighborhood, it's crucial to stay vigilant and aware of one's surroundings. Outside, and checked the back door. It turned out that the intruder had damaged the lock in his attempt to force it open. The incident left us all on edge. My parents contacted the police to report the attempted break-in, and they advised us to be vigilant and secure our home properly. It was a sobering reminder that no neighborhood, regardless of its perceived safety, is immune to potential threats. In the days that followed, my family took steps to enhance our home security. We reinforced the locks on all doors and windows, installed motion-activated lights in the backyard, and discussed neighborhood safety with our neighbors. The experience made us more aware of the importance of looking out for one another and maintaining open communication within the community. As time passed, the initial fear subsided, but the memory lingered. It served as a lesson in the vulnerability of our homes, prompting us to prioritize safety measures and be cautious, even in familiar surroundings. The incident also reinforced the significance of trusting our instincts. The uneasy feeling I had when I first saw the person outside turned out to be a valid warning. Ultimately, our neighborhood became more proactive in addressing security concerns.
fostering a sense of unity among residents. Though the incident was unsettling, it led to positive changes that benefited the community as a whole. It taught us the importance of remaining vigilant and taking necessary precautions to protect our homes and loved ones. And I was terrified that the woman would hear me if I tried to make a call. Instead, I quickly went into my room and locked the door, trying to think of the best course of action. I decided to grab my cell phone and texted my neighbor, explaining the situation and asking if they could call the police for me. I provided them with my address and waited anxiously in my locked room. My heart raced as I heard the clanking noises continue in the kitchen. It felt like an eternity before I received a response from my neighbor. They assured me that they had called the police and that help was on the way. Meanwhile, I remained hidden in my room, fearful of the potential confrontation with the woman in the kitchen. Minutes later, I heard the distant wail of sirens approaching. The sound provided a strange mix of relief and anxiety. I stayed put until I heard the police entering the house, instructing the intruder to show her hands and lie on the ground. The situation unfolded outside my line of sight, and all I could do was listen to the commands and the woman's responses. Eventually, the police managed to apprehend her, and the house fell silent once again. I cautiously opened my bedroom door to find officers securing the scene and ensuring my safety. They explained that the woman was a known local transient with a history of similar incidents. My parents arrived home soon after, shocked and concerned about what had transpired. The police assured us that they would handle the situation, and we learned that the woman had been arrested for breaking and entering. The incident left a lasting impact on me, causing a heightened sense of awareness and security in my own home. It was a stark reminder of the vulnerability that comes with living in an area where crime can unexpectedly breach the walls of your sanctuary. From that day forward, my parents and I took extra precautions to ensure the safety of our home, implementing additional security measures and staying vigilant in the face of potential threats. Into multiple houses in the area before, had been causing problems for a while now. The police informed me that they had been actively trying to locate her, and my incident was a part of a string of break-ins that she was responsible for. I gave my statement to the police, recounting the details of the encounter. They thanked me for my cooperation and assured me that they would be pressing charges against the woman for breaking and entering, among other offenses. The neighbors who had offered their assistance were kind enough to drive me to the hospital to get my sprained ankle checked out. Over the following weeks, my family and I worked closely with the police to strengthen our home security measures. We installed additional locks, upgraded our alarm system, and became more vigilant about keeping doors and windows secure. The incident served as a wake-up call for our entire neighborhood, prompting increased communication and vigilance among residents. The legal proceedings against the woman revealed a troubling history of mental health issues and homelessness. Despite the unsettling encounter, a part of me felt a sense of sympathy for her difficult circumstances. However, it reinforced the importance of community awareness and support systems for individuals struggling with mental health challenges. In the aftermath, my family and I became more involved in neighborhood watch programs and community initiatives to enhance safety. The incident, while traumatic, ultimately strengthened the bonds within our community as neighbors rallied together 
to ensure the well-being of everyone in the area. The experience left a lasting impact on me, emphasizing the significance of unity, communication, and proactive measures to protect ourselves and those around us. It was a chapter in my life that taught me valuable lessons about resilience, community strength, and the importance of looking out for one another. The revelation from my mom about the woman holding a kitchen knife outside my bedroom door sent shivers down my spine. The gravity of the situation hit me, realizing how close I had come to a potentially dangerous encounter. The decision to jump out of my window albeit with a sprained ankle, suddenly felt like a life-saving instinct. My parents and I were profoundly grateful for the swift and decisive actions of the police that day. The installation of the security system, coupled with increased community awareness, provided an added layer of protection. It was a stark reminder that the importance of vigilance and proactive measures cannot be overstated when it comes to home security. As the years passed, the incident served as a catalyst for ongoing discussions within our family about safety protocols and emergency preparedness. We continued to stay engaged in neighborhood watch initiatives, sharing our experience with others to emphasize the significance of maintaining a secure environment. Reflecting on that night, recognized the fragility of our sense of security and the unpredictable nature of life. The incident fueled a deeper appreciation for the bonds we share as a family and with our community. It underscored the importance of being aware of our surroundings, staying connected with neighbors, and taking concrete steps to safeguard our homes. While the memory of that night remains haunting, it also stands as a testament to the resilience of our community and the strength we found in unity. Our collective efforts to enhance security measures ensured that the neighborhood became a safer place for everyone. As I continue to navigate through life, I carry the lessons learned from that harrowing experience. The importance of preparedness, the value of community support, and the realization that sometimes our instincts can be the key to survival. I remain grateful for the swift actions that protected me that night and committed to maintaining a vigilant and secure living environment for myself and those around me. Over the years, the incident has become a defining chapter in our family narrative shaping the way we approach safety and security. The installation of the security system not only provided a sense of protection, but also served as a constant reminder of the vulnerability that exists even within the confines of our homes. As time passed, our neighborhood underwent positive transformations. The community became more closely knit and neighbors actively collaborated to ensure the well-being of everyone. The collective efforts to share information about potential threats and reinforce safety measures turned our once troubled neighborhood into a safer and more secure place. The experience instilled in me a sense of resilience and heightened awareness, not only for my personal safety, but also for the safety of those around me. It taught me that while we can't predict every potential danger, taking proactive steps to secure our environment can make a significant difference. In the years following the incident, I pursued opportunities to learn more about personal safety and emergency preparedness. From self-defense classes to community workshops, I sought to empower myself with knowledge and skills that could prove invaluable in unforeseen circumstances. The memory of that night has not faded, and it has become a source of motivation to 
contribute positively to the safety and well-being of my community. I have actively participated in local initiatives focused on crime prevention and community outreach, aiming to create an environment where everyone feels secure and supported. As life continues, the lessons learned from that harrowing experience serve as a constant reminder to remain vigilant and proactive. I am grateful for the strength we found as a family and the resilience of our community. The incident, though traumatic, ultimately led to positive changes that have shaped not only our home, but the entire neighborhood. In the ever-evolving journey of life, the commitment to fostering a safe and secure environment remains steadfast. The echoes of that night propel me to be an advocate for personal safety, community engagement, and the importance of staying connected with those around us. Through shared experiences and mutual support, we can build a foundation of security that withstands the tests of time. Over the years, the incident has become a defining chapter in our family narrative, shaping the way we approach safety and security. The installation of the security system not only provided a sense of protection, but also served as a constant reminder of the vulnerability that exists even within the confines of our homes. As time passed, our neighborhood underwent positive transformations. The community became more closely knit and neighbors actively collaborated to ensure the well-being of everyone. The collective efforts to share information about potential threats and reinforce safety measures turned our once troubled neighborhood into a safer and more secure place. The experience instilled in me a sense of resilience and heightened awareness, not only for my personal safety, but also for the safety of those around me. It taught me that while we can't predict every potential danger, taking proactive steps to secure our environment can make a significant difference. In the years following the incident, I pursued opportunities to learn more about personal safety and emergency preparedness, from self-defense classes to community workshops. I sought to empower myself with knowledge and skills that could prove invaluable in unforeseen circumstances. The memory of that night has not faded, and it has become a source of motivation to contribute positively to the safety and well-being of my community. I have actively participated in local initiatives focused on crime prevention and community outreach, aiming to create an environment where everyone feels secure and supported. As life continues, the lessons learned from that harrowing experience serve as a constant reminder to remain vigilant and proactive. I am grateful for the strength we found as a family and the resilience of our community. The incident, though traumatic, ultimately led to positive changes that have shaped not only our home, but the entire neighborhood. In the ever-evolving journey of life, the commitment to fostering a safe and secure environment remains steadfast. The echoes of that night propel me to be an advocate for personal safety, community engagement, and the importance of staying connected with those around us. Through shared experiences and mutual support, we can build a foundation of security that withstands the tests of time. In the eerie stillness of the night, the shadows seemed to dance in macabre harmony, weaving a tapestry of fear that clung to the air. The small town of Ravenswood had long been shrouded in whispers of the supernatural. Nothing could prepare its residents for the chilling events that unfolded in the dilapidated mansion at the edge of town. 
Legend spoke of the Vanderludens, a family cursed through the ages, their bloodline tainted by a dark pact made with an otherworldly entity. The mansion, abandoned for decades, cast a foreboding silhouette against the moonlit sky, its crumbling facade concealing the secrets that festered within. A group of intrepid friends, drawn by both curiosity and the allure of a local legend, decided to explore the forsaken mansion one fateful Halloween night. As they ventured into the decaying halls, the air grew thick with a palpable malevolence, and the temperature plummeted with each step deeper into the heart of darkness. Creaking floorboards echoed their presence, and whispers of long-gone souls seemed to reverberate through the desolate chambers. Unbeknownst to them, an ancient force stirred, awakened by their intrusion into the realm of the supernatural. As the group delved further into the mansion's labyrinthine passages, they stumbled upon an ornate door seemingly untouched by the passage of time. Intrigued, they cautiously pushed it open, revealing a room bathed in an otherworldly glow. In its center lay an ancient tome, bound in human skin and etched with cryptic symbols. Compelled by an unseen force, one of the friends reached for the forbidden book and began to recite an incantation long been forgotten by the living. The room quivered with a malevolent energy as the incantation echoed through the desolate halls, awakening the dormant spirits that lurked within. A ghastly mist enveloped the room, and the friends found themselves trapped in a nightmarish dimension where the boundaries between the living and the dead blurred. The malevolent force, hungry for souls, manifested in horrifying apparitions that tormented the group with their deepest fears. Desperation clawed at the hearts of the friends as they sought an escape from the spectral torment that ensnared them. With each passing moment, the mansion seemed to morph into a nightmarish labyrinth, twisting reality into a grotesque carnival of horror. In a final, desperate act, the friends managed to break the cursed incantation, sealing the malevolent force back into the shadows from whence it came. The mansion, once a beacon of dread, returned to its silent slumber, and the friends emerged, forever changed by the spectral ordeal. As the first light of dawn painted the sky, Ravenswood held its breath. The secrets of the van der Luyden mansion buried once more in the annals of horror. The town, though scarred by the night's malevolence, remained a testament to the enduring power of darkness, lurking patiently until the next unsuspecting soul dared to venture into its haunted embrace.